So welcome to the JV Media Institute free monthly webinar. This is Sarah. I'm the lead instructor of the Institute, and I'm here with Justin Bellamy, my co-founder. Hey, Sarah. Thank you. And we've also got Edwin Luskin in the room today. Hey there. So today we're going to get started um, pretty quickly by leaping into our presentation topics. For those of you who've already registered, then you know we are um, going to be talking today about marketing partnerships. We'll also be talking about LinkedIn advertising, and we should also have plenty of time for submitting questions to us through the chat, and we're glad to answer any other things that come up. If you're on the Facebook live stream, then um, you'll also be able to submit questions through Facebook. So I'll be monitoring kind of things as we go along. So if you submit a question, it might take us a few minutes to get to it, but I guarantee you um, we will be able to fit you in and find the time. So I want to go ahead and give Justin the reins to kick us off today by starting out talking about marketing partnerships and how to really develop partnerships that will drive both leads and sales. So I'm really excited to talk about this topic. Thanks for putting this together, Justin. Thank you, Sarah, and thanks everyone for joining the uh, live webinar today. Um, this is the first time I've like, actually been presenting on one of our monthly li free live webinars, so I'm excited to be participating this, this time. Uh, after a couple months of pretty heavy travel over the last two or three months. Um, so I want to jump right into it because I feel like I have quite a bit to cover and I want to make sure I give Edwin his, his uh, time as well after my presentation to talk about LinkedIn advertising. So um, what I'm going to be speaking about today is how marketing partnerships can help drive sales for small business. And I'm going to be speaking mostly from personal experience um, regarding how I started JB Media Group and how I've leveraged partnerships over the years to help grow the business and some of the more strategic and higher level partnerships that we're developing right now uh, that I think are really setting the stage for our future growth and talk a little bit about um, kind of how kind of the process of how I've um, how I've developed these partnerships and um, some examples as well as some tactics and strategies so Let's go ahead and get started um, moving through the presentation. Um, so what we covered today, um, why marketing partnerships are important, um, types, of, types of effective partnerships, common goals and outcomes, and several examples and case studies from primarily from JB Media Group as well as JB Media Institute as well. So um, some of you may have seen my past presentation on marketing partnerships, which was more about um, kind of B2C partnerships, in other words, how to use partnerships to reach large numbers of people using influencers, event sponsorships, uh, contests, things of that nature. This is more about B2B relationships and how to develop leads, sales, and collaborative content with other partners that help grow um, sales relationships and business relationships at the higher level compared to uh, what we talked about in, in past uh, trainings and content I've covered on this topic. So um, as we've discussed before, partnerships often help build trust um, because reaching new people and building trust is challenging and takes time. Um, communicating with an existing audience or contacts is easier. And um, sorry, navigating here a little bit. Um, when you're working with a partner, they have the trust of their audience and or their business contacts. So that can turn what may be a cold lead or a, um, a first-time outreach into a warmer lead or a warmer contact if a partner is making the introduction or you're collaborating to create content together or doing a training together. It can really um, elevate the trust and confidence the sales leads and other, your new business contacts would have with you because of the, the trust they already have in the partner you're working with. And in my opinion, thinking creatively about partnerships can equal big wins for a variety of different types of businesses, and I'm going to go into more examples, including some of our current work uh, later on in the presentation. And many types of partnerships are free or low cost. All they take is time to build and maintain these relationships. So I'm going to talk about some of my recommendations for building and maintaining relationships and um, some of the strategies for how to make, keep them going without overburdening yourself with too much work or, or too many meetings. So I'm going to start with a list here of some of the uh, different types of partnerships that I want to speak to today regarding uh, sales-related partnerships. So one is mentors and advisors. 
when I started JB Media Group, I put together a list of around six advisory board members. This is a informal ad hoc group. Um, some of them were mentors as well. Um, and overall, I would say close to half of our business in the first three or four years uh, came from, in some way or another, my relationship with my mentors and advisors. Um, some of them ended up leading to introducing me to other people who became mentors, who also became people who referred lots of business to me. And I'll explain one of those later in the case studies. Um, others were other agencies, you know, the owners of other agencies, including, for instance, Craig McCanch, who owned the co-working space where I started the company. He also owned an advertising agency, and we received a handful of fairly su substantial projects referred through him and his company. And that would be another example of, you know, a mentor-advisor relationship. There was also a strategic partnership with another um, similar company that doesn't do the same work. So that would be an example of a non-competitive peer. So we currently have partnerships with web development companies, uh, software development companies, um, business coaching businesses, and things of that nature where we don't do the same kind of work, and we refer business to them, they refer business to us, and we sometimes do more advanced things like work on trainings together or um, present at events together, or they bring us in to do consulting for a client, which could turn into a larger project with their clients and vice versa. Um, also, smaller and larger direct competitors can be potential um, partnerships. So example for this, um, we send a lot of work to two or three local companies that do the same kind of work as us and also some of our institute graduates who are freelancers because we get leads for companies that can't afford our services. So we send them off to uh, several local SEO firms that do more local small business SEO, several social media consultants and smaller social media firms, um, and sometimes PR companies as well. So we send business down funnel or down, down market sometimes, um, and, so, and in some cases they send business back to us. If they come across a project that's too big, um, too national in nature, uh, or needs services that they don't provide, like social media for the smaller SEO firms or online advertising for those same firms, where we provide a, a wider range of services. And now as I'm branching out beyond Asheville, I'm trying to create partnerships with larger agencies who could send us work simply because um, they don't, um, they can't handle some smaller projects that are for, on their size of scale smaller. Maybe for us that would be one of our largest clients, which for a company in LA or New York might be too small. You know, in some of, the, some of those cases, they might be looking for twenty dollars to $30,000 a month to make, make sense for them. And for us, a client that wanted to spend twenty dollars or $30,000 a month would actually be our largest client at this point as far as our direct services. Um, so then there's also business associations and trade organizations, things like the Chamber of Commerce, um, organizations like um, like the Restaurant Association and other organizations you might be able to do a training partnership with or just attend their events or sponsor their events in order to build um, relationships and leads. Um, media companies, this would be creating content like in the past we've done content for um, several local magazines on a regular basis including Capital at Play and now as we move into a larger national uh, distribution of our, our, our sales efforts, we're working with Conscious Company Media and potentially several other companies to do written content for them that would help put us in front of the right kind of, of, uh, of companies and clients. Um, I've had a lot of success getting leads uh, from doing leadership programs. I've done Leadership Asheville, Leadership North Carolina, Hive Global Leaders, which is a program out of San Francisco, and Starting Block, which is a leadership development program out of Boulder, Colorado, and in all, all four cases I have uh, received actual sales leads that turned into business uh, from my cohort or other alumni through using the social media platforms and email platforms that they provide to their, to their alumni. And then lastly, I think this is the last one on the list, um, maybe one more after this, events and conferences. So we are doing a lot of different partnerships with events where we um, are helping them market the event and then doing getting a sponsorship in exchange or where we're providing um, content for the event in the form of workshops or panels, which we can then uh, attend and, and get value from that. Lastly is nonprofits. Um, 
This one's a little bit trickier depending on your business model, but it's often possible to sponsor a nonprofit and then attend their events. And if their audience is similar to yours, you can get leads and referrals in that um, cause marketing impact of doing helping the nonprofit puts you in a, a positive light with their donors and their followers who may need what you offer. So um, let me talk about some of the common outcomes that we look for with partnerships. Um, one is to build your contact list and your business social network, which in my opinion for me is Facebook and more than that LinkedIn. Um, you can build these relationships through partnerships by getting warm introductions, um, adding yourself to their networks and things of that nature. Um, building content together um, that can support your own content marketing. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then obviously warming, g gaining warm qualified leads. This would be direct referrals that come from your partners who make introductions or bring you to meetings where they're uh, presenting to a partner or to a client where you can, they can make um, an introduction for you and, and advocate or recommend your services. Um, this is how we get a number of our clients. Um, so we have a local web development company that recently brought us in to a meeting uh, where we presented what we are capable of doing, put together a proposal, and we actually landed that project pretty quickly. Um, so here are some strategies when you're trying to figure out ways to generate warm introductions to potential partners that you don't already have a relationship with, or you want to take a very early stage relationship and take it to the next level. Um, one of them is to offer to moderate or organize a panel for an event or a conference, and then invite your ideal partners as the panelists. This puts you in a position of authority and leadership, giving them an opportunity to do a sales presentation or at least a thought leadership presentation to an audience where you get a lot of value for, as being the person who helped organize that. So I've done this before locally, and I've also been working right now on a panel at a, for a conference in San Francisco that could generate a lot of business for us as well as the other panelists. Um, it's one of the largest conferences in um, social impact um, entrepreneurship and investing, and I've been approved to put together a panel of five or six communications and marketing folks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attract companies that are larger than us to that panel so that I can create those um, types of partnerships I was talking about earlier and also just build relationships with them because we don't do exactly the same thing as any of the other companies I'm going to be inviting, so there's an opportunity for that peer, that non-competitive peer as well as that larger competitor uh, relationship that I mentioned before. Um, another thing you can do is start a podcast, radio show, or video series where you uh, interview your potential partners as examples of, of people doing the kind of work you want to show off in your podcast or show. Um, we're going to be working, we already basically do this from time to time through our training program and through videos. Um, local radio shows, this can be an option for that as well. Um, podcast is another example. Whatever medium is most comfortable for you or you feel mo most uh, meets your, your availability and your needs, um, this can really help. Um, people love to be featured on these types of content, and it can really be a way to get to know them better um, and then follow up afterwards with a, for a conversation about how you can work together in a more substantial way. You have that warm, um, that warm introduction that you created by hosting them on the show. Um, if, if, if verbal or video content is challenging for you for whatever reason, then writing an ebook and working with partners uh, as contributors is a great way to break through that challenge. Um, you know, you can, uh, one thing I wanted to, one tip I wanted to mention is we attend a lot of events and conferences and I often find myself concerned with whether or not I'm doing a good enough job at these events. Um, making relationships. I'm somewhat introverted, so when I'm at large events, I can feel a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but I've, I've come away recently with the goal of every major event I attend only coming away with two or three really good leads for partners. Um, rather than trying to talk to everyone, um, sort of feel out the room, maybe look at who's going to be there beforehand, and go straight to the people you want to connect with. Um, bring your energy and your A game, which I can only do for a couple of hours you know, each day when I'm at big events and try to make those strong relationships with the people that could lead to a major um, step forward or step up in your business, and then retreat to like, get the rest and, and recuperation that you need um, so that you can do the, your best work in as limited time rather than trying to 
talk to everyone. This is just me as an introvert needing that kind of that kind of approach. If your business development person is extremely extroverted, they may be able to talk to 20 or 30 people a day and then, you know, call down and, and, and focus the list afterwards. Personally, I'm not able to do that. I don't feel like I bring my best self to that many conversations at once and I get really overwhelmed and, um, and to tend to get a little bit fried and that doesn't really usually lead to um, the best impression or the best result. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, this is especially true if you're about to meet someone who you think could be a life-changing or game-changing partner, always do your research. Um, when I've had several meetings with people that became mentors, I did a lot of research before going into those meetings. I looked at their history, their education, how they started their company, where they hit roadblocks in their career, anything I can find as a point of connection. Um, and it's always led to stronger relationships from the get-go, which usually leads to uh, a deeper long-term and more meaningful relationship. I'll, I can share one of those examples later on when I get to the case studies. So things to do to maintain partners. Um, I think it's important to meet with them quarterly. Um, and if you're taking them to lunch, always pay for that lunch. Um, sometimes it may not be an in-person meeting, maybe a phone call or just a, a kind of a catch up over the phone or over, over video chat. Um, you know, you may be inc inclined to meet more frequently with very large partners, but um, I found that we have about 30 or 40 uh, partners that I want to maintain relationships with, and even meeting quarterly with all of them is a challenge because that's basically um, almost two a week. Um, so what I've done now is now I have a business development person who's come on board, and I've started introducing our new salesperson, Sarah, to these partners. Um, therefore, um, she can start having those quarterly meetings with them once they build their own relationship, which is helpful to take pressure off of me. Um, collaborate on content. This is just a reiteration of something before, but if you're you know, frequently doing new content, um, blogs, webinars, eBooks, um, podcasts, then you can touch base with your major partners a couple times a year and get them involved in something, which just gives you an opportunity to check in, see if they're working on anything exciting that you could collaborate with, um, or if they have any new clients or leads that you want to um, want to potentially work with. Um, and then send them leads and referrals. This is critical. Um, we've had a couple of relationships where we sent five or six leads to them before we ever got one from back from them. And actually, a good example of this is we've been sending leads to a web development firm in Asheville for several years. And um, then when a new salesperson come on board, I said, let's go into quarterly meetings with this partner, try to elevate this relationship. We had lunch with the partner. And then at that lunch, they mentioned a client they thought they could use our help. They set up a meeting. We had the meeting. We closed the deal within a few weeks. We start this week or next week. So I don't know that that would have happened without the all basically two out of three of these things happening. The meeting in person and um, sending them a bunch of leads and referrals beforehand. So for the last few minutes, I'm going to talk about a few examples and case studies that I have done in my career, starting from early on and then some that are still in the works. Um, one is when I started the company, I put um, one of my closest contacts in the local corporate social media scene from Grove Park Inn on my advisory board. And within a few months, he introduced me to the CEO of Grove Park Inn, and I was able to, to that was a meeting I did a lot of research for knowing that the CEO of Grove Park Inn, Craig um, Madison at the time, uh, could become a mentor or potential uh, advisor to my company. So I did a lot of research on him and learned about his, his career, which is, had some similar parallels to mine, although he was uh, 25 or so years older than me. Um, that, through that process of effort and focus, I was able to land Grove Park Inn as a client. Um, and then over time, Craig moved on to a consulting business, and they, he became a partner. In other words, he was uh, referring a lot of his social media SEO work directly to my agency, and he became a, one of my closest mentors, or who I meet with two to three times a year, to talk about some of the biggest decisions and challenges I have to make as a business owner, including whether or not to buy this office that we're in, um, how, you know, hiring and firing, and, and, and real estate decisions, and just life, life, uh, life decisions as well. So he's become a friend, mentor, and advisor. At this point, he hasn't sent us any new business in a while, but I still have a huge amount of respect and highly value that relationship that came from an advisor and, and planning for that first meeting opportunity I had to meet him. 
Um, another example was about two years ago, I picked up a magazine off the newsstand at Green Life in Asheville, which is a Whole Foods uh, subsidiary. And it looked like a great magazine for one of our major events to be featured in. Um, so I looked through the magazine. I found out the name of the head of their advisory board. I contacted him on LinkedIn. Cold outreach. Um, he responded quickly. We had a phone call. He introduced me to their um, director of partnerships. I set up a call with her. We closed the partnership for our client. Um, then they were a partner of this event that it was our largest client. From there, they were um, they had a booth at the event, which happened to be right beside ours. Um, coming out of that, we we spent the whole weeks right beside them, having conversations, led to follow-up calls. The magazine became a client, and now we've done two webinars through them, one coming up next month and one, one a few months ago, and we were a sponsor of their event, which was in, in, San, in uh, Santa Cruz, California in June. And from that event, we have partners for the webinar I'm putting, or the panel I'm putting together at that conference, as well as uh, one large client lead that could be pretty, pretty substantial for our business. So that's sort of an example of picking up a magazine, leading to multiple partnerships and multiple opportunities for the company. Um, another one, Ashoka is a nonprofit out of Washington, D.C., which was a small level partnership uh, partner when we started working for this large event in San Francisco. And from that, um, we, I've been trying for two years to land them as either a client or a partner. And it completely fell off for over a year, no communication, no response for over a year. We were able to re-engage them in March. And as of this week, we're confirmed to do two webinars for them later this summer and fall. And they're interested in making that a recurring thing. And they're still open and interested in talking to us about Asha becoming a, a them becoming a client as well. So this is another example of persistence, always like never giving up on an opportunity and um, kind of figuring out how to, you know, keep trying to make something work. Um, so I mentioned earlier when it came to leadership programs, um, I attended Hive last April and starting block this May. These are four-day leadership development programs geared towards people who want to have a positive social impact through their business or their career. Um, in both cases, I attended as a paying participant, um, no, not knowing anyone from the organization, or in the case of Hive, I, I very loosely knew the founder um, and nobody else. So when I was there, I was looking for a couple of relationships, including connection with the organization hosting the event. In both cases, I was able to land partnerships with the hosting organization afterwards to do training for their alumni, who are the kind of clients we want to work with. And um, in some cases, potentially down the line, them becoming paying clients. Um, so we've done webinars for uh, Hive. We are in negotiation to do one for Starting Block. And we're doing some pro bono work for Starting Block. They're a nonprofit, which could lead to more substantial paid work or more substantial work that could drive sales in the future. Um, and I'm working on a, on a proposal right now for a company that I met at Starting Block in May, their main keynote on the first day was the founder of a company out of Ohio. I had a conversation with him at lunch. He was an example of one of those two to three relationships I was trying to build while there. Um, had follow -up, two follow-up conversations with him, working on a scope of work. And that scope of work would also include potentially collaborative webinars and a webinar strategy for, the, for this company that I met that could lead to um, potentially us doing work together with them that could lead to business opportunities for us in the future, um, as well as it being a, a, um, a paying client relationship for us as well. So these are a lot of examples, a lot of information, um, but I wanted to share from our perspective, from my perspective, how I'm always trying to figure out what the long-term value or possible um, positive outcomes can come from very, some cases, very small meetings or just picking up a newspaper off the, off the newsstand or attending an event where I'm paying participant, how I can get some, you know, hopefully get some value back long term other than just what I'm learning. Um, so that is my core uh, material. And I want to spend uh, just a minute or two on Q&A because I want to make sure we give Edwin plenty of time. I know my, my presentation went a little bit long. Uh, but are there any quick questions we have from the audience?
I was going to say, if you want, we can start setting up. I know sometimes it takes people just a minute to type something in there. Um, and we can get Edwin rolled over to this side. Um, but I just want to say, you know, thank you for sharing all that, Justin, because I think one of the things that we focus on, not just at the Institute, but also at your agency, is really that human connection. And even from a marketing perspective, focusing on that human connection and fostering the relationships and all of that stuff. And I think what you're speaking to it just it really kind of brings that back around how useful it is to have your own personal connections you yeah. know to build those partnerships to sit down with people and have those conversations with folks about how you can make connections there's only one of you so you obviously you can only do so much of that yeah and then it kind of comes to an end so if you have a plan put together for how you want to approach people and how you think you can you know make it work I mean all of that is going to make it much more effective the time that you do have face-to-face -face. absolutely and I don't, doesn't look like there's any questions coming in, but if anyone has um, questions that they think of later on, um, please email me or even call me. Um, my email is right here on this last slide. And I'm happy to provide support on folks who are trying to understand maybe how for their business this type of strategy could work. Um, it's very custom. I've used a very custom um, approach to building partnerships and relationships for JB Media, but I do think it applies to a lot of other businesses. <coughs> Um, all right, so let, let's switch it up and get Edwin over here in the hot seat. I'm going to take my, my Facebook Live offline.